When I went to the Java Land Center in Dallas back in August for my first Counter-Strike Global Offensive Tournament, I did a lot better than I thought I would. My team got fourth place overall, even though I was just a substitute on a team I got with two months prior to the tournament. I met a bunch of people who are really passionate about the game, and there was a Zowie representative there, and he's letting me look at all their products. So I asked him for the most popular mouse in the Counter-Strike professional scene, the Zowie EC2A. In my opinion, the most important thing when shopping for a mouse, especially for first-person shooters, is the shape. And Zowie knows this. Their shape is their selling point. And there are so many subtle curves, especially along where your thumb rests, that you'll never lose your grip on it, even though there's no rubber on the side. Which I appreciate, because rubber on mice will just wear away over time or get gross because of the grease on your fingers. Once you use this mouse, it'll be the most comfortable you ever use. And that's just not my opinion. Tons of people agree. This mouse is made for right-handed people in mind, but you can pick up an ambidextrous design that has a very similar and comfortable shape. The length of this mouse is 12 centimeters, the width is 6.6 .6 centimeters, and the height is 4 centimeters. Placing it in about the medium category. But because of how exceptional the shape is, you're going to be able to comfortably use this mouse no matter if you have small, medium, or large hands. This mouse is also at a very comfortable and safe weight of 92 grams. Liar, liar. It's not too heavy for those who like their light mice that can get those sick flick shots, but it's not too light for those who need heavier mice to steady their aim. The weight is also distributed very well. The front, back, and sides don't feel heavier than one another. It's pretty odd for the shape alone to be the selling point of a mouse, but when it's executed this well, it's no wonder so many people talk about it. Moving on to the mouse buttons. Personally, I prefer mice that are a bit tougher to click so I don't accidentally click them whenever I'm sliding the mouse all around. Enemy spot. This mouse uses Huano switches, which are pretty firm and they are a very crisp click. Between the mouse buttons, you will unsurprisingly find the mouse wheel. When you scroll the mouse wheel, you'll be able to feel a subtle click with each time you scroll through it. It's not as prominent as the scroll wheel on the Logitech G502, but it's still there and very noticeable. The mouse scroll itself is pretty resistant. This was a pretty dividing thing whenever I asked my friends to check out this mouse. Those who used it prominently for gaming loved it. They said they got a lot better accuracy when they had to scroll through their weapon wheel very quickly. On the other hand, those of my friends who used the mouse more productively said that the scroll wheel would fatigue their finger after a while if they had to scroll through Reddit a bunch or Facebook or something like that. Clicking down on the mouse scroll wheel is not the most crisp click I've ever felt and I imagine a large part of that is due to the mouse wheel being entirely made of rubber, but it still feels very nice and is far from the worst mouse wheel I've ever had to use. Hi, editor Happy Hacker here in post. Um, I lost the footage when I'm talking about the side mouse buttons, so I'll just quickly go over it here while B-roll shoots. The side mouse buttons are the absolute worst part of this mouse. They sink really far into their hole, and it feels like they are activated by a spring rather than an actual mechanical switch, like the, say, Final Mouse Air 58 uses switches. I don't know what the EC2A uses for their side mouse buttons, because I do not want to take this mouse apart. I have to return it, but they feel really bad, and if... Zowie decides to make a EC3A. I really hope that they upgrade these mouse buttons because they are really the only complaint I have about this mouse. Look under the mouse, you will find a 3310 sensor. Some people may turn their heads at this older sensor, but it performed perfectly, honestly. I can't recall a single time where I had an issue with tracking. This mouse was able to track my movements perfectly whether I was playing Counter-Strike or Osu. I tested the mouse for built-in acceleration by putting two hard objects at a distance and moving my mouse at various speeds between the two. There is no built-in mouse acceleration, which would be a very bad thing if you're trying to sell a mouse to first-person shooter professionals. So unsurprisingly, I'm glad it's not there. To the right of the sensor, you'll find your DPI button, which lets you switch between 400, 800, 1600, and 3200 DPI. The indicator for what DPI you use is indicated by the scroll wheel, 400 being red, 800 being purple, 1600 being blue, and 3200 being green. Unfortunately, there's no way to change this. So if you're a low sensitivity gamer who really likes the color green, but not enough to get a bunch of razor stuff, then you may need to dial back that sensitivity by a good bit. 
out of the box, this mouse has a polling rate of 1000 Hertz, but just in case you wanna change that, whenever you plug in your mouse, if you hold mouse buttons four, you can change it to 125 Hertz. If you hold just mouse button five, you can change it to 500 Hertz. And holding mouse buttons four and five switches it back to 1000 Hertz. I tested this mouse using Zowie's own polling rate monitor, which may seem a bit biased, but it's correct for every other mouse I've tested. So I have no reason to believe it would lie in this one instance. And lastly, the cord that you use to plug your mouse into the computer, it may not be braided like many high quality gaming mice, but I think this was a conscious decision by Zowie to cut down on weight. Usually braided mice will get in the way requiring you to use a mouse bungee or taping the wire behind your monitor. With this mouse, it hardly ever gets in the way. So in conclusion, I really only have two issues with this mouse, the thumb buttons and the one shell design, which again is a non-issue. This is still one of the best mice I've ever had. I've been using this mouse for school, work, collegiate practice, and for IT work whenever I have to go out. And it will, I will continue to keep it on me until Zowie releases a new model. Thank you guys very much for watching. If you liked what you saw, leave a like. If you are interested in other Zowie products, you can check out my Celeritas 2 review right up here. And if you are interested in more mice, then keep a lookout for the Final Mouse Air 58, which I will be reviewing next week. If you have any questions, please let me know in the comments and I will try to answer them all. This is Happy Hacker and I hope to see you next time.